Hello, I'm Dave Moore. And I'm Steve Edgington. And we're crop protection scientists working at CABI. Our interest lies in finding alternative methods of pest control, how to kill insect pests in agricultural land. As part of this, we're working with scientists from Chile, uh, Andres France and Loretto Marino. And we're looking for insect killing fungi and nematodes from ecologically diverse areas of Chile. Why do we do this in Chile? Because Chile is a very long country, stretching some 4,500 kilometers in length, north to south, from the driest desert in the world, the Atacama, in the north to near Antarctic conditions in the far south. From west to east, over a few hundred kilometers, it goes from sea level up to five, 6,000 meters or more in the Andes. So there's a range of ecosystems from where we're gonna find very fit fungi and worms. Appropriately, it's also 200th anniversary of Charles Darwin's birthday. And although he's better known for working in the Galapagos Islands, Charles Darwin spent a considerable amount of time working in Chile. Charles Darwin was investigating biodiversity of the area, unknown at the time. A century and a half later, we're following in his footsteps. We're also studying little-known biodiversity, the hidden world of fungi and nematodes. These fungi and nematodes attack insects, killing them, and the great beauty of these organisms is that they produce more spores and more nematodes out of the dead insect. These are then available to kill more insects, increasing the persistency of control. This natural biodiversity can be used as safe and very effective biological pesticides. To develop our biological pesticides, we need to find organisms with a range of characteristics. And for this, we took on surveys which covered the whole length of the country, with broad bands from the sea to the mountains of the Andes. We covered the harsh deserts of the far north, the agricultural central regions, the volcanic and the lake regions, all the way down to Chile and Patagonia and the biting winds of Tierra del Fuego. In each place we took soil samples, which we then baited with live insects to extract any insect killing fungi and nematodes. We then identified what we'd found and got it safely into living storage. The surveys were brilliant and we were keen to get some, to some of the more extreme environments, whether they were localised extremes or on a much grander scale, 5,000 metres up in the snow of the Andes for example. And this included some islands off the southerly coast of Chile, of which Little Isla Magdalena was probably the highlight. We hired a small wooden boat and before setting off our captain stopped at the Coast Guard station and took our passports inside. Why we asked? Well, he said, it's for easier identification of the bodies. Now, going out was fine. Coming back, though, the weather had worsened, and as we sat there looking up at the waves around us in our very small boat, this passport idea suddenly seemed a very good one. But it was worth it. We'd found a brand new species of nematode, and it's the longest species of nematode of its kind as yet discovered. We'd found 99 isolates of nematodes. We wanted 100. So we decided on one last survey to the archipelago of Chiloé, a favourite place of Charles Darwin. A 600 kilometre drive from our base in Chian and a short ferry ride took us to Chiloé. We also spent some time on two of Chiloé's smaller islands, Achao and Limoy, and it was on Limoy that we reached our end point, on the 4th of December in the tiny village of Tetif. On our last day before returning to mainland Chile, we visited the Darwin Research Centre on the north of the island, where we read that Charles Darwin had also been to Tetif on the 4th of December in 1834. By some fluke of intelligent design, we'd missed our hero by only 174 years to the day. In Chiloé, we'd found two more isolates and nematodes, taking our grand total to 101. The diversity amongst the fungi and nematodes that we found is incredible, but our important job now is to look at how useful these organisms can be as biological controls for the farmers of Chile, replacing chemical insecticides. The project has been a great success. We've followed in the fine footsteps of Charles Darwin and taken a wonderful look at the unseen biodiversity of Chile's soils. A fine project and a great team. <laughs>